Halete, welcome back. So we're picking up on uh, Fabulae Cirae 32, Apollo and Daphne, and we are at line 34. So we had just done, Apo but Apollo uh, pursued her, meaning um, Daphne, excited by love, excitatus amore. And then also in line 34, Cre Batik, this one was running, Hik is uh, masculine, so it refers to Apollo. Said ila tam kelerisarat, but that one, or she, referring to Daphne, knows ila is feminine, was so fast, ut paine volaret, that she was almost flying. Cum capre puellam frustra conorator, when he tried, conorator, to catch the girl, capre puellam, in vain, frustra. Seek Deus Sipius Clamawet. So the god uh, shouted out uh, rather often. So Sipius with the IUS ending, that's a comparative adverb, so thus rather or quite often. More often would be the normal way we do that, but a lot of times uh, it works well to do rather or quite. O oh, me amor, O oh, my love, cor meum, my heart, sola mea space, my only hope. Ne me fugaris. Notice the eri in fugaris. This is a perfect subjunctive, and with the ne, that makes the negative command we've seen before. Don't you uh, flee me? Don't run away from me. Respike, oh respike tantum. Look back, oh just look back, or only look back. Vide, see, non pastor quidam, not some shepherd. Said ipse te sequitur Apollo. But Apollo himself, Ipse Apollo, is following you. Te sequitur. At Daphne, but Daphne, non constitit, did not stop. Notice constitit uh, is coming from the third principle part, so that's why it's did not stop. It's perfect tense. Consistent would be the present tense. Imo, no way. Calerius Curins, running more swiftly, more quickly. Notice again the IUS comparative adverb ending. Actemens, and fearing, ne deus se consecurator, that the god would catch her. Okay, so there's a fear clause. Those usually start with ne and have a subjunctive verb. Fearing the god would catch her. Um, talia verba se cum decebat. She was speaking such words, talia verba with herself. Now we would say to herself in English, but Latin usually says you think or say things with with a person. Utanam ne iste deus me fugientim capiat. Um, Utanam introduces a wish clause with a subjunctive verb and the ne makes it negative. So I wish that that God, iste deus, would not catch me running away. Copyot there, present subjunctive, let's beat a giant friar. Quis me adiuet? Who would, who may help me, aid me? Again, adiuet is a present subjunctive, like copyot. Here we have a series of sort of hypothetical or deliberative questions. Who would, who may help me? And then the next one, quo fugiam, where should I flee to? Where should I run to? And then another, quid faciam, what should I do? What am I to do? Utanam, so there's that uh, word that introduces a wish again, so we can expect a subjunctive verb coming. Utanam salva in locum perwiniam. I wish that I would come safe, salva, into a place in locum. Ubi extra periculum sim, where I would be outside of danger. Mox vero, but soon, vires omnes eam deseru erunt. Soon all her strength deserted her. Tremema yam, now she was trembling, toto corpore, on, on or in her whole body, ablative case there. Palebat vultus, her face, her facial expression, vultus, so sort of the look of her face, palebat, grew pale. Odio errat effectum miserum cor, her miserable heart, miserum cor, had been afflicted with or affected with hatred, odio. Neque yam tenuis space animum tenebat, nor now did thin hope tenuis space hold her mind tenebat animum. 
tunc cum ven ven sui solis virbus e tanto periculo e fugere non iam posse conceret then when she thought conceret that she was no longer able non iam posse to escape e fugere from such great danger e tanto periculo sui solis virbus with her own strength alone patrem deum fluminus quod prope fluebat precata est she prayed precata est to her father the god of the river patrem deum fluminus which was flowing by quod prope fluebat and then here we get the prayer clause um prayer and wish clauses um that are dependent clauses we'll start with ut or nay uh, and then have subjunctive verb. So prayed ut se aguaret that he help her. O pater, O father, oro te, I beg you, I ask you, ut me adues. Here's another prayer clause that you aid me, that you help me. So again, ut clause with adues here, present subjunctive verb. Out terram aperi, either open up the earth. Aut me in aliam forma muta, or change me into another form. Auxilium a te peto, I am seeking help or aid from you. Weeks preces dixerat, scarcely had she said her prayers. Cum subito, when suddenly, membra constiterunt, her limbs stopped, stood still. Et corpus cortice operire coitum est, and her body began so corpus quiptum est, to be covered, operiri, with um, bark, cortice. Capilli in frondes, brachia in ramos, mutata sunt. Her hair changed into, or were changed, her hairs were changed into leaves, frond. Her arms were changed into branches, ramos. Veloces denique pedes, finally her swift feet, radices egerunt. Um, played the role of roots, okay? Now, that egerunt, that's coming from ago, that's that verb that be means basically anything. I remember do, drive, live, discuss, spend time, but essentially it takes on its role from whatever. And one of the things it can be is to play a part in a play, and that's kind of how I translated it there. Um, you could translate it in different ways, but her swift feet did roots, that is, played the part of roots, Frustra, in vain, nunc Apollo, now Apollo, Daphne's corpus complicte bater, um, was embracing Daphne's body. Now, Daphne is a genitive singular. It doesn't look like that, but that's because Daphne, again, is a Greek name. So that's a genitive singular form of first declension in Greek. So, uh, Daphne's body he, he was embracing. Durum ac frigidum, hard and cold. Notice those are neuter, referring to her corpus, which is neuter. So her body has become the trunk of a tree, so that's why it's described as hard and cold. It's no longer warm with uh, blood flowing through her body and so on. In eius arboris formum, uh, formam mutatum, having been changed into the shape of that tree, quae laurus abelator, which is called a laurel. So again, Daphne is laurel tree in ancient Greek. Laurus is laurel tree in Latin. Um, the laurel tree is also called the bay tree or the bay laurel. If you've ever used bay leaves in cooking or found bay leaves in maybe spaghetti sauce or something like that, these are the leaves of the laurel tree. And they used them in victory celebrations and they were associated, as we see here, with Apollo. Exclamawit Deus, the god shouted out, Dolore maximo permotos, very moved by the greatest grief or by the greatest pain. Probably grief fits better here. Et nesquis o puella carissima inquit. And he says, you don't know nesquis, O oh, most dear girl. Qualem deum fugeris, what sort of a god you, are, you have run away from. Fugeris is the perfect subjunctive here. At corniam conjunx mea esse non potes, but since, corniam, you cannot be my wife, non potes conjunx mea esse. All right, now look at that quickly. There is a typo in that sentence there. 
perhaps you notice that known should have a long mark. Always a long mark on known. All right, and continuing. Arbor eres mea. You will be my tree. Okay, so he's saying, if I can't marry you, I'm going to make you my tree, Laurel. <laughs> or Daphne, to speak ancient Greek. Because Daphne, of course, is her name, but also the name of the new tree she became. This is an etiological myth explaining the origin of something. There are a lot of myths like this. There's one about Pan chasing Syrinx, who turns into a, a reed, and the word for a reed, you know, the plants that grow by rivers, is Syrinx in ancient Greek. Capilos fides fare tramque mihi simper ornabis. You will always decorate, simper ornabis. My hair, Capilos, my lyre, fides, and my quiver, fare tram, for me, mihi. Itaque, and so, ex illo tempore, from that time, Laurus Apollini sacra fuit. The laurel was sacred to Apollo. Well, I hope that that made sense. I hope you learned a few things about Latin, about the story of Apollo and Daphne. And, um, valete, curate vos, take care of yourselves.